to Tattered Stitch Embroideries. I'm Nicole and today we're going to be working on these cute little cat quilt blocks. I'm going to show you a complete step-by-step -step video tutorial on how to construct these blocks and uh, show you that the process is really quite simple. Each file that you receive will come zipped and it'll have multiple formats. Um, and then also you're going to get a thread chart and I have a lot of people asking me about you know, how do you match up your threads to the thread charts and how do I make sure that the machine is showing me the proper thread colors and what do I do? Basically, the thread charts that we provide are fairly generic. I use Madeira threads when I'm making my thread chart list. But then also, off to the side of each color breakdown, you're going to see, of each color breakdown, you're going to see that I've given you a list of what you're actually stitching. So the lilac, say, is going to be the center panel uh, tack down. And then you're going to get into like cream white, and that's going to be the top of the ears, and it's going to be maybe part of the tail. So for each color listing, I give you what you're actually stitching so that you can determine your own color choices if you'd like. Um, basically, it's just a, a guide, and it's not necessarily set in stone for the, th the colors that you need to use. Okay, so now we're going to look at the hooping of the project. Basically, what I recommend that you use is Soft and Stay Stabilizer for the hooping. Um, it's a nice stabilizer. It's not going to bunch up when you go to wash it. You don't have to cut it away. You don't have to tear it away. Um, and then for the pattern, what I'm selecting is actually the 8 by 8 inch block. And so what I tell people um, when they're cutting their fabric, if you're going to use a 5x5 five five block, you want to cut your fabric to say 6x6 six six or 7x7. Seven seven. You want to go an inch or two bigger so that you have enough overlap when you're placing and tacking down your fabric. And you also want to make sure that you have enough overlap to be able to trim fabric away so that you get your edges nice and neat when you're going to finish your project. Okay, so now we have actually hooped our stabilizer. I've selected my pattern and I'm ready to start stitching. So I'm making sure that everything is in place. I'm hitting the start button and we are going to embroider out our placement stitch. That's Mason, by the way. He just woke up from his nap and he thought it would be fun to hang out with us and watch us do this video. So now that our placement stitch has been finalized, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay down my batting and I'm just gonna place it, what looks to be straight and center, over my placement stitch. And then I'm gonna take my layer of fabric and I'm gonna place that, what looks to be straight and center. And then I'm just gonna tape it down. I'm gonna use painter's tape, just to the top and bottom so it doesn't shift when it's embroidering. And then I'm gonna place it back into the machine and we're gonna stitch out our tack down stitch. Okay, so I've got everything back into the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and run my tack down. And once this is done stitching, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the same thread and I'm going to embroider out the scalloped background that you see in the frame of the art. Okay, this is going to go ahead and it's going to embroider out that scalloped border. Okay, so we have finished stitching out the background of this quilt block. Just trimming away some excess threads. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to trim away the center square. And I do that mainly because I use white fabric a lot of the time when I'm actually stitching out the main design of the pattern. And I don't want whatever background fabric I'm using to show through the white fabric. I don't want it to impede with the design of the, fab of the design, so I trim it away. So that's what we're doing right now. And then I'm gonna lay down my white block, tape it into place, and we're gonna stitch out our tack down. Okay, so quick trim right there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay down my block. 
Again, I have it cut to about an inch bigger all the way around. So I got about a half inch of extra fabric so that when I stitch it, I can trim it away easily. So I'm just gonna tape all of our bits in place here, all of our edges, and we're gonna put it back in the machine and we're gonna run our tack down stitch. If you accidentally stitch over your tape, it's really, really easy to stop your machine and pull the tape away once it's tacked down. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull it out of the machine and I'm gonna trim away the edges. Okay, well, the tack down has been finished, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna trim away the excess material. And once this is trimmed away, we're gonna put it back into the machine and it's gonna be ready to digitize or stitch out the actual cat pattern. I try to trim really, really close to those stitches so that when you run the satin stitch or the pearl stitch, you don't have any excess fabric hanging over the stitching. We have embroidered the main design of the pattern and now we're finishing up with the pearl satin stitching. Okay, so we have finished our quilt cap block and it looks absolutely beautiful now that it's done. Um, there is one last step that you can do once you've finished embroidering out the final pearl satin stitching. You can go ahead and flip the hoop over and then you can lay a back piece of fabric down and you can tack down another stitch and that will give you a final back panel to hide all the stitching if you don't want that to show but I'm going to use this as a wall hanging and so I'm not going to worry about putting on the back panel piece of fabric. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is but again that step is there in case you want all those stitches to be hidden and we're done.